Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome. So uh, we wanted to welcome everybody to uh, defining virtual audiences with infinity mapping. Uh, wanted to uh, just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pete Riddell. I'm an executive creative director of Dursey's customer experience and storytelling team. Today, joined by my colleague, Adam. Hey there, experienced designer with Dursey. Great to be here. And then we were also joined by our uh, moderator, who uh, at this point is the uh, most imp important person in the universe, Joe Oakland. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, just a quick reminder, it's a 20, 25 minute session. Uh, we've got some polling questions here, so we're really looking forward to your feedback, but uh, uh, we've got a very simple agenda. We just wanna kind of pick your brain a little bit first, uh, and then we're gonna unpack the idea of infinity mapping, what it is, how it works, its value in a larger planning process. And then Adam's going to share some examples from uh, how we put it in play for uh, one of our clients. So uh, let's get into it. So the first thing we wanted to do was uh, get a sense of how we're meeting you and how you're coming to this concept of virtual planning. Does your company have a dedicated virtual events team? Uh, yes or no? And we'll give it a few seconds here as those responses uh, click in. And I think we have a dashboard here. And um, the, the answer is predominantly yes. Um, so that's good and that's exciting. Um, and it's very in line with kind of what we're seeing and experiencing with our clients. Uh, secondly, how challenging has it been to align internally on virtual events? Um, has it been an absolute piece of cake? Uh, has it been bumpy at first, uh, but we're figuring out as we go? Has it uh, been extremely challenging, meaning like you're really in the midst of the struggle and the struggle is real, or you are still on the precipice and have not yet launched virtual events? I think that's been a B for us, Pete. Absolutely, and I think like it's, I. To me, that's how you know you're doing it right uh, for anything that you're trying new. Um, and yeah, and actually that's the majority. 52% bumpy at first, but we're figuring it out. 20% um, admitted to extremely challenging. Uh, one, one lonely person said piece of cake. Good for you. We hate you. <laughs> um, uh, and then interestingly, 27% have not yet launched or produced virtual events. Um, our third polling question, what role has your exhibit and events team played in virtual events? Um, no role at all, backseat driver, critical team member, um, so seat at the main table or leading the charge. Um, and even if you are not specifically part of your company's exhibit and events team, just give your perspective to the best that you know it. Seeing the response coming in, um, Actually, the leading is uh, leading the charge, 42% and 38% uh, critical team member, critical team member. So that's 80% in one of those two slots. Candidly, that's as it should be. Um, just uh, what we found with our clients is the skill sets that make our clients just super effective in planning events of in the in-person world translate fairly seamlessly to producing virtual events. So that's awesome. We appreciate you guys sharing that. So um, what we wanted to do was just um, contextualize and explain what we mean by infinity mapping, what it is and how it fits into this larger um, uh, campaign of customer journey that is um, the infinity loop. Um, is if you sat in our, our, our keynote session, you understand that this is essentially um, uh, a customer journey that seeks to um, blend uh, in-person experiences, the eventual return with virtual and digital experiences as well. And it's a lot to take in. It's a lot for uh, companies and our clients to pivot towards. So what we found is like one of the most crucial steps uh, in this process of figuring out what your roadmap looks like uh, or even your event looks like is the most important step is the first one. And that is infinity mapping. Uh, for us and our clients. And what it is, is it is a workshopping, road mapping exercise and process that is aimed at doing three things. 
to help our clients kind of achieve kind of a programmatic sensibility on how they can captivate at-home audiences today while planning for the safe return of in-person events and experiences. And then moving forward, how do you model that hybrid engagement strategy, the best of both worlds of digital, virtual, and in-person for the months and really the years to come? So we wanted to unpack what we mean by infinity mapping. And essentially, you can think of it as customer journey mapping but across that hybrid continuum. And it really works from an audience first perspective. So when you're thinking about the digital experiences, the virtual experiences, and the in-person experiences that you're looking to put into play, who are the audiences that you are looking to engage with? And what are their primary care abouts and needs, right? Um, and then the other part of that process is okay, as a result of your experience, be it virtual, digital, or in person, what action or actions do you want those audiences to take as a result of your experience, of them engaging with you? So what do the audiences uh, care about? What action or actions do you want them to take? And then mapping the customer journey that meets them at their point of need or interest and then equips them with what you feel they need to think, know, and do, and feel in order to motivate the desired next step or next step. So it's really a road mapping process of the customer journey. Um, and that, that sensibility of the customer journey could be thought of in this infinity loop, meaning like across all of these activation points or whatever of these activation points are relevant to your program, you can think about it programmatically in terms of mapping the customer journey across the continuum of these events, or you could take a specific activation, be it a webinar, be it a live virtual event, um, and then map an individual experience customer journey. How do you want to move that customer or that audience through your virtual event or experience? So again, breaking the fourth wall, in uh, our planning for this webinar, we did this. We, we, we broke down and identified who the audiences were hoping to engage. What do they care about? What's top of mind for them? And then what do we feel they most need to know, think, do, and feel while spending time with us here in order to meet you at your points of needs and curiosities and motivate appropriate next steps. So again, this concept of infinity mapping could be done at a programmatic level or at a micro event level as well. The other really important part of this infinity mapping workshop and process is uh, it allows and enables our clients to get the right people to the table the stakeholders who have a vested interest in the success of the initiative, whether it's thinking about the larger program or thinking about a specific event in particular, it gets uh, all the, um, the, the important departments within that valuable ecosystem to the table right off the bat. And again, like one of the um, things that uh, I know our clients and also we realized as well early in the process is that when considering this pivot to digital and virtual, it's involving a larger and different ecosystem and is typically involved with the production of in-person events and experiences. Uh, so it's really essential to make sure that the IT team is involved. Uh, for a lot of our clients, uh, it's important to have um, you know, security and or legal involved. Maybe there's in-house a digital team as well. So it's a much more holistic approach. And then Adam, I know um, in, in uh, some of your recent experiences, it even expands outside of our clients ecosystem, right? That's right, to include um, other partner agencies so that we're able to share assets and make sure we're creating that cohesive um, customer journey across all of the touch points. So by having kind of like the right people at the table from the outset, it A, gives them a voice, gets it on everyone's radar so you can understand how their needs need to be addressed in and through the process as well. So wanted to turn it over to Adam to give kind of an example of how we put this process in play for one of our clients. 
So uh, the client is Massimo. Uh, we got together with their stakeholders for this Infinity Mapping session, and that was inclusive of an executive sponsor, as well as our day-to-day uh, -day events contact, but also the internal creative agencies um, of Massimo. And we got all those folks aligned along with uh, IT and identified who their audiences were. And we came up with an experience to launch at uh, CAS, which is the Canadian Anesthesiology Society show. And this experience was a virtual operating room. And the anesthesiologist would be able to visit. This site was live on the web and uh, congruent with the uh, conference. And they could see the operating room from their perspective, from the anesthesiologist cockpit inside the operating room, how are our client Mosmo's products connecting to provide better patient monitoring? So that was kind of phase one. We had to hit that upcoming show, uh, but because we were taking a broader strategic approach, uh, we also uh, have a phase two. And in phase two, we have the virtual operating room, but it's built out also with additional uh, rooms of a complete virtual hospital. So like an intensive care unit, a nurse's station. And because it's this broader tool um, that can accommodate more different types of audience journeys, uh, this becomes more of a sales and conversation tool that would be guided by a Massimo representative uh, in face-to-face -face interactions when those start to come back online um, or online. And uh, additionally, the metrics of this tablet tool tie into the CRM uh, for Mosmo, so it's a complete sales cycle tool. Now, if we can start to imagine how something like that uh, could continue to be used on a customer journey that continues into live events, there's some exciting potential. Uh, for instance, Mosmo has a briefing center and because of the close collaboration we had with the stakeholders uh, the virtual environment that we built that you saw before on the tablet and on the on the computer uh, actually mirrors one-to-one -one the way their products are displayed and laid out in the physical briefing center that they have in Irvine California so we can imagine using that conversation tool the tablet app to drive visits to the physical briefing center um, once people start to get more accustomed with travel in the future and the stories that are being told will be congruent one-to-one. -one. If we imagine even further into the future, uh, we're going back to conferences now, uh, we can use those same 360 degree virtual assets in a trade show environment or a pop-up environment um, to be able to show the virtual operating room, the virtual hospital in an interactive and immersive way in that context. So just thinking about how the stories are congruent and how we can maximize the client's investment in the digital tool uh, for something face-to-face -face in the future. Some things, uh, we want to leave you with some takeaways here, some key takeaways. I think what Infinity Mapping is most about is about identifying and aligning the stakeholders uh, to creating the customer journey, getting that investment and uh, that contribution early on in the process. And uh, we're doing that so that we can build consensus on what the visitor journey should be, the Infinity Loop journey should be. And that's going to be aimed at three things, captivating the at-home audiences today planning for the return of in-person events safely in the future, and then lastly, modeling a hybrid engagement strategy for the years to come uh, so that we can use these tools further into the future. And uh, just to add on to that, Adam, um, to me, like the illustration with Mossimo is hyper relevant uh, because we know uh, that was born out of a very common challenge a lot of our clients are facing is when shows have gone virtual, what do we do? And you know there might be a tendency to think only in terms of, oh, what do we do for that show? But again, to the team's credit, to Massimo's credit, there was really kind of a long view going in saying, okay, how can we be relevant 
um, at this show, but then how can we leverage that investment in other places and other spaces and how can we build on it incrementally? So really kind of a programmatic sensibility inspired by that infinity mapping uh, premise. So again, a really, really great example there. Um, we would love the opportunity uh, to just further discuss with you what this approach could mean for you and your program. Again, most of our clients, even though every need is different, most of them have that one uh, common denominator of the event went virtual, what do we do? So again, our great encouragement is to think of a big picture perspective of, okay, how you can meet that opportunity, but also create with the greatest utility in mind. So here's our contact info. We would welcome the chance uh, to further dialogue with you, uh, but we really appreciate you taking the time with us today, and we wish you the best of luck in your Infinity Loop um, planning and prep. So thank you, Adam. Thank you, Joe. And uh, thank you. We uh, look forward to staying in the loop.